gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Vigar Industries Limited Q1 FI23 earnings conference call hosted by Philip Capital India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Deepak Agarwal from Philip Capital India Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, all. On behalf of Philip Capital, I welcome you all to Vigar Industries Limited Q1 FY23 earning call. Today we have with us management represented by Mr. Mithun Chitalavalli, Managing Director, Mr. Rama Chandran, CEO and Mr. Sudarshan Kastuti, CFO. So without taking much of time, I would like to hand over the floor to the management for their opening remarks, post which we will be open the floor for Q&A. Thank you so much and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deepak, and thank you, Philip Capital, for hosting this call. A very warm welcome to everyone present, and thank you very much for joining us today to discuss the operating and financial performance of our company for the first quarter of financial year 2022-23. We are pleased to report a robust start to the financial year, to the fiscal year, with the consolidated net revenues of 1018 crores in Q1, carrying forward the momentum from the previous quarter. This marks the highest ever revenue for us in the first quarter and is a successful quarter with revenues crossing the threshold of 1000 crores. We have delivered 80% YOY revenue growth this quarter, albeit on a low base given the impact of the second wave of COVID-19 across the country last year. Consumer demand has held up despite significant price increases during the last four quarters, while electricals and consumer durable segment continue to report strong growth. The electronic segment has also stepped up to deliver an improved trajectory this quarter. During the quarter, we witnessed a broad-based contribution from both South and Non-South markets that witnessed YOY growth of 68.2% and 95.6% respectively. With a near doubling of revenues from the Non-South markets compared to the previous corresponding quarter last year, they contributed almost 47% of the total revenue in Q1, higher than 43.2% last year Q1. The sustained growth in the non-South markets bodes well for the progression of Vigard as a strong nationwide brand characterized by a more diversified revenue profile. On the product side, the electron electrical segment, which is our largest revenue contributor, comprised of wires, pump, switch gear, and modular switches, we registered a growth of 60% by Y. In the consumer durable segment, where we market fans, water heaters, kitchen appliances, and air coolers, Q1 revenues doubled registering a growth of 99.7% YOY. In our electronics segment, comprising of stabilizers, UPS and inverters, we improved traction during the summer months to achieve a growth of 90.8% YOY. Input prices are still higher on a YOY basis and gross margin in Q1 FI23 was 29.8% vis-a-vis 33.0% last year Q1. We expect this to recover to normative levels in the next one or two quarters. On a quarter-on-quarter -on -quarter basis, we have witnessed a slight improvement in gross margin as the price actions undertaken in prior quarters for some products have now flowed through the distribution channel. At the start of the quarter, we undertook further price action of around 3% across select products. However, as we witnessed the commodity prices peak out, it obviated the need for further pricing action, especially in the consumer durable segment. We are closely monitoring the situation and the slight easing of commodity prices is helping to address the gaps in seller categories, where the complete transmission to the end consumers had not fully been undertaken. The EBITDA margin was at 8.1% during the quarter, has declined on a Q1Q basis as significant drop in copper prices in, during June affected the margin for wires, and this is likely to extend some more impact in Q2 as well. With the risk of supply chain disruptions, Minimizing, we have reduced, started to reduce inventory levels. We had a strong positive cash flow for the quarter. We believe we are well placed to meet consumer demand over the coming months, and this will enable us to get to normative inventory levels, resulting in stronger cash flows from the business. With that, I conclude my opening remarks. I would like to 
thank Flip Capital and uh, Deepak Agarwal for hosting this call and would like to open the, ask the moderator to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just three questions uh, very quickly. Firstly, on the ECD Mithun, I thought the growth was you know, very strong. Uh, could you elaborate a bit uh, which category did well and you know what's the outlook on ECD margins? They are still hovering in single digits. I'm pretty sure because of price hikes and raw materials coming down, uh, the margins should actually track back. Uh, so any comments, please? So ECD, uh, the two large categories in ECD is, uh, you know, uh, fans and water heaters. Uh, fans uh, had a pretty strong quarter uh, because of a very good uh, seasonal demand uh, in the first half of the quarter. Uh, however, the demand in June was slightly subdued. Uh, water heaters also had a very good growth, uh, you know, in the first quarter, but uh, it would have been on a lower base. And on the margins, Vipul? Margins, uh, like we said in the opening call, you know, a lot of the commodity prices have started to correct, uh, you know, and the correction is ongoing. Uh, so we think that uh, there is some uh, respite for us. I think uh, from Q3 onwards, uh, we should start to see the margins now play. Okay, got that. A second question was on this acquisition of the balance 26% in guts Electromech. Uh, could you just help us uh, recap what is this about and, you know, what does this company do, the subsidiary? Yeah, Ram, you want to take this? Yeah. So, uh, uh, Guts, uh, you know, is a, uh, you know, is a company which is in the business of switch gears, and uh, we had acquired them as part of, uh, you know, building uh, supply capability for Vigard. And uh, you know, at the time that we had acquired the company, uh, we had structured the transaction uh, to be able to acquire. 76% uh, upfront, and the remaining 24 was to be acquired after the 426. Yeah, uh, sorry, 7426. The remaining 26 was supposed to be acquired uh, after five years. So, so I think uh, we are uh, now fulfilling the last leg of the agreed uh, transaction uh, by acquiring the remaining 26%. So, what is the cost for this? And uh, this is like manufacturing facility for Sudhir, is it? Yeah, this is a manufacturing facility for switchgear, yeah. This company was in the business of uh, switchgear manufacturing uh, and sales and supply and uh, we had acquired uh, the company to secure switchgear supplies and to support the growth of the switchgear business of Vigar. And what are the investments for this 26%? Sorry, I could not understand your question. The investment needed for acquiring this 26%? It's about 6.5 crores, I think, Ram? Yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Ah, investment, is it? Yes, yeah, 6.2 crores. Yes. 6.2 crores. Oh. Okay, got it. And lastly, just a bookkeeping question, other expenses at 145 crores for the quarter, any one-offs here, it looks like a bit higher on a historical basis. Sudarshan? Um, yeah, so I'll just cover that for a moment. See, the other expenses have... Um, uh, certain items which are factory expenses and certain items which are volume related. So a lot of them uh, are in line with the turnover growth. Uh, other than that, the ANP has gone up and a few uh, and a few overhead items like um, the impact traveling, of traveling has gone up. So thing is the main thing. Yeah. yeah. So basically, travel. Uh, you know, uh, some are volume related, like uh, you know right outward and all that. Some are factory related like packing material and uh, also manpower etc. Yeah, out of the total increase of about 55 crores, uh, about 30, 32 crores is all volume related items and about 78 crores is A and B. The balance is largely, you know, travel and, uh, uh, you know, selling manpower cost and so on. 
Got it, sir. Thank you so much for answering my questions and wish you all the luck for the rest of the year. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Bhartia from Investec. Please go ahead. Um, hi, good afternoon, sir. Um, so my first question is on the electronic segment. Uh, if we look at the growth of the segment on a, let's say, three-year basis, um, uh, essentially comparing it versus pre-COVID uh, time, uh, the growth appears to be pretty tepid. Uh, I mean, it's something like uh, uh, in, in Q1, FY20, we had some 280-odd crore rupees of revenues from the segment. Now it's uh, grown only to around 300 crores. Uh, so what is that really on account of? Uh, because what we were picking is uh, that at least for ACs, demand has been fairly robust this season. So uh, there was uh, good demand for ACs, uh, you know, from April 1st to, let's say, May 10th. So the last uh, 45 to 50 days uh, was quite bad. Uh, so, you know, the, the demand was not as, you know, as it should have been. However, the AC sales were good. I mean, we had uh, we had very good growth in the AC sales, supplies of sales. But the, the growth in uh, inverter and battery business was not as, as good. We had some supply issues for inverter also because we were not having the requisite uh, electronic items. So some of the supplies were also impacted. Uh, Ram, anything to add to that? Yeah, just uh, one more point. I think uh, quarter one FY20 was, you know, uh, exceptionally strong for stabilizer. Uh, so I think, you know, that's uh, one uh, factor that uh, we need to uh, keep in mind. Yeah? Yeah. Sure. And so when you think about this segment uh, uh, and both stabilizers and uh, uh, digital UPS separately, uh, what is the kind of growth potential that you see over a five-year period? Uh, are these categories likely to be growing at a very, very slow pace uh, or could they be actually plateauing out at some stage? So stabilizer is a fairly mature category. I think Viva holds very high market share in the organized trade. So unless the category itself grows, uh, you know, the ability for Vega to grow faster than the, uh, you know, category growth may be limited. Uh, in the case of inverter battery, Vega is a very small market share holder, so definitely the growth prospects are uh, very good. We are setting up two factories, one to manufacture inverters and one to manufacture battery, and uh, we're hoping that in the next 18 months uh, they should come online. And that will really improve the competitiveness uh, for Vega products. And uh, today, you know, we are just having, uh, you know, uh, a three percent share of a twelve thousand crore uh, market in inverters, and uh, we can definitely improve that. Understood, sir. Um, so, also, if you could uh, spell out how exactly lower copper prices have impacted our margins in the electrical vertical, uh, is there any inventory write-off or inventory revaluation also that may have taken place, and what could be the quantum of uh, overall impact of lower low, low copper prices? So just in June, month of June, we had a, you know, write-off of about 10 crores would be the impact of copper crash. Uh, so that has impacted the, you know, results by about 1% in EBITDA margin for the whole organization. Uh, yeah. So mainly from coming from wires. Understood. Understood. And uh, will we be still carrying some high-cost inventory and uh, consequently should we, um, uh, should we estimate some impact flowing through to second quarter as well? So I think, uh, you know, what could happen is uh, some impact will be there in the month of uh, July, but August and September, you know, uh, the company should get benefit of the lower cost uh, input. Uh, Sudarshan, do you want to supplement this? Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, nothing, nothing to add. Understood. Uh, and so my last question is that uh, you have referred uh, to coming back to normative margins in, uh, let's say, one to two quarters time. What do you consider as the uh, uh, normalized margins for the company? Should should we look at something like 32-odd percent? Uh, yeah, 32 so, and 3 percent of gross margin is about, uh, is about what we are talking about. So pre-COVID uh, margins is what we intended. That's about 32 percent. Great, great. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Charanjit Singh from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Yes. 
So first of all, on the fan segment, uh, especially if you can highlight now what is the mix for us in terms of premium versus economy. And, uh, you know, we had uh, set up the capacity to ramp up our, you know, premium offering. How is that uh, scaling up? Uh, and from in-house manufacturing perspective, what proportion is right now being catered by the in-house manufacturing and fan segment? <coughs> That's my first question. Yeah. Ram, you want to take this? Um, I didn't get the question fully, but I think, uh, uh, can you, uh, sorry, I was reading something. Uh, can you kindly repeat the question again? Sir, uh, in the fan segment, uh, premium versus economy, what's the mix right now for us? And we had also, you know, set up a plant where we wanted to, you know, manufacture more of premium uh, fans. Yeah. How is that scaling up? And what is the proportion of in-house versus outsourced, you know, uh, manufacturing within the fan segment? Sure, sure, sure. That is the later part I did uh, certainly here. Uh, so, so I think uh, the manufacturing initiative is going well, and I think uh, you know we are, uh, I think, uh, uh, close to uh, you know we expect to fully utilize uh, the uh, you know what I would say uh, the core segmental capacity. You know, the capacity is divided into you know two parts. So I think you know. Uh, the major part, uh, you know, which is related to, uh, you know, uh, we plan to fully utilize. So I think the, you know, as far as the manufacture, manufacturing uh, shift is concerned, that's going well. Most of those fans are, uh, you know, uh, in the premium segment, and then, you know, therefore, you know, the premium segment is uh, significantly expanding, uh, you know, in relation to the popular segment. Yeah. Uh, now uh, coming to what is our ratio, I think you know now we should be at about uh, forty percent to fifty percent on premium, more sixty. Oh, premium. Yeah, We should be in the region of forty to fifty percent on uh, in the premium segment. Uh, sh this should go. This should uh, get better as we move forward. Yeah, particularly with the BLDC coming in and uh, also the you know energy efficiency part, you know, for you know also uh, coming in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, from water heaters perspective now, what will be our market share and uh, how is that market, you know, uh, shaping up in terms of the competitive intensity uh, going forward? See, we don't want to give out uh, any market share numbers. Uh, all we can say is that we are doing extremely well in the water heater business. Uh, we had uh, lost some shares, you know, in FY21 uh, and FY22 we regained uh, some of that share back and FY23 we are, you know, growing from there. So that's all we can comment as of now. Okay. And so lastly, from my side, on the pumps uh, market, if you can give some color in terms of how the outlook is there for the pumps market and, uh, you know, what is the kind of price increases which you would have taken, especially in the pumps market, uh, and uh, how is the competition coming from the unorganized segment in, uh, in the segment? So pump is uh, part of the electrical basket for us, but uh, it's not a very large category. It's uh, probably about 10% uh, of the total uh, revenues of the company, um, or a little less than that. Uh, the pump has been impacted in terms of huge input price increases. Uh, there have been multiple rounds of price increases. Uh, some increases are yet to be passed on to the market as many of the leading players have refused to, you know, take. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, probably the last round of price increase. The good news is uh, the, the the commodities have started to correct, like iron and uh, steel and all that, and copper. So I think uh, pumps should bounce back. Uh, the volumes in pumps are impacted. Uh, the margins in pumps are impacted. Okay. So, so just lastly, you know, if I have to look at overall from a consumer electricals, uh, you know, volume. Uh, growth perspective, will you be able to share any outlook in terms of how is the volume growth expectation going forward uh, for uh, key product categories? So I think, uh, you know, I think uh, we don't give out these numbers out outside. Uh, these are, you know, we have a, our annual operating plan, but we don't give out the product wise number. But the Vegard, uh, you know, it typically targets a 15% uh, growth uh, in volume, uh, and that's what we will be targeting this year. Got it, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of 
Jay Shah from Capital PMS. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Congratulations, sir, for good set of numbers. Sir, I just wanted to know something, if you can throw some light on the business side, basically in the electronics uh, segment and even the wire and cable. What, what is the kind of uh, demand mix that we are seeing from? Is it more from the real estate or, uh, you know, there is more uh, demand coming from the data centers and, you know, the new kind of feedback that is happening? Uh, so, if, if you could give us some, you know, light on what is the mix like? I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about wires, right? Yes, wires, cable. Yeah. So, in the case of wires, uh, we got uh, project business is only 5 to 7% of total revenue, 95% of our cables go to the retail market. Having said that, uh, the improvement in demand uh, from the construction sector has meant that the uh, brands which were, you know, focusing on, you know, B2B business have uh, also, you know, so the uh, hyper competition uh, in the retail business is slightly less now uh, because the construction demand is decent. So, that, that's one way to look at it. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for me. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bhavin Vitlani from SBI Mutual Funds. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so pardon me uh, if I'm repeating the question. I joined in late. So in the durable segment, uh, uh, after the, uh, the, uh, the fourth quarter call, you had highlighted that uh, the target is to take the margins to about 7% uh, this year and double digit in the, the, the latter years, but we've seen the margins are sub 2%. Uh, could you just give us uh, uh, where do we see the margins going forward and what will drive the margins higher? So, uh, consumer durable has two components, uh, you know, large categories in it, which is fan and uh, water heater. Uh, inherently, water heaters is a higher margin business for us uh, than the other businesses uh, for VGAT. Uh, so water heater typically kicks in, uh, you know, in terms of revenues uh, and margins in Q2 and Q3. So I think, uh, uh, you know, some of it uh, is also seasonality. Uh, I think we are hopeful on hitting the number, uh, you know, may not be double digit, but I think uh, we probably can hit, you know, 7% margin in March quarter uh, because the, the prices of you know, many of the products have, I mean, raw materials have come down. For example, the major cost in fan is uh, two. One is aluminium and second is, uh, you know, uh, copper. Both uh, had peaked uh, in the month of May. So once these higher value, uh, you know, inventories are reducing and uh, we start to procure uh, products, uh, I mean, raw materials at new prices, the margins would improve. So I think uh, probably you would have seen the worst of uh, for consumer durables in the last, you know, four quarters uh, in terms of margins. Uh, thanks. But the, the second, if you could just highlight uh, uh, switches and the switch gear uh, is, is an area that you have now identified and uh, we have seen that uh, you have been successful in growing the fans and the uh, diesel segment exponentially over the last three years. Uh, if you could just give us a roadmap on the switches and the switch gear se segment because you have done a couple of acquisitions also in this space. Uh, Ram, you want to take this? Yeah, I think um, you know uh, we you know uh, we want to you know uh, aggressively uh, grow these two categories. Uh, but I think uh, you know uh, we are uh, relatively young. I think you know in switches we are about uh, you know three to four years old, and maybe in switch care about six to seven years old. I think these two categories are growing well, and I think you know we are able to grow the category at a faster growth rate uh, than our uh, overall business growth. So I think you know we should be able to grow them at about uh, 25 to 30 percent over, over over the next uh, three to four years, right? Sure. So, so uh, when is that you you believe that this category could hit 500 crores? Uh, I believe currently it's about 150 or crores. Uh, I think uh, you know. Uh, I think, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, compound it at 25% uh, per annum and probably you may reach to some number, but I think our base numbers may be a bit better than, you know, what you said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
great. This last question from my side. Um, and pardon me if I'm repeating uh, the question. Uh, in your press release, you mentioned there were some inventory losses. So would it be possible for you to quantify uh, the kind of inventory losses which are there in the wires uh, segment? And what's the kind of inventory that you uh, generally carry for the wires as a segment? Uh, so, Rashan? Yes. Uh, yeah, the um, the impact of copper drop during Q1 was about 10 crores. So, we impacted margins by about 1% at the company level. Typically, we tend to have, uh, you know, RM plus AFT anywhere between 45 and 60 days. Great. Uh, thank you so much for taking my questions. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Rakesh Roy from Insect Securities and Finance Limited. Please go ahead. To which region do well or uh, we can't hear you. Mr. Uh, the line has been disconnected, so we will take the next in line, and that is Mr. Keshav Baradia from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So just to know why the margins in the ECD business got impacted, and uh, also another question is, how how do we see the in-house manufacturing share going forward? Like let's say in two three years, uh, what do we see? How much can it go from the current sixty percent? So the uh, ECB margins have been impacted mainly because of uh, the the fan business. I think the fan business has been the most uh, impact one of the most impacted categories, primarily because uh, most of the fans produced uh, by us and competitors are aluminium fans. Uh, and basically the component aluminum had shot up significantly after the Russian invasion of Ukraine as Russia is one of the major uh, producers of aluminum. Uh, and now now I think the aluminum prices are coming down. Uh, so so I think the durable margins should improve. So this is one reason. Second is, uh, uh, you know, we are relatively uh, newer brand. If you look at fans, kitchen appliances, uh, you know, apart from water heaters, our market share in durables are, consumer durables are quite low. So, obviously, being a smaller, you know, market share holder and smaller brand in this uh, segment will mean that our ability to pass on pricing can only, you know, be there after the leaders in the segment pass on pricing. And typically, we may be carrying le less uh, inventory uh, in terms of, uh, you know, strategic buying of raw material and all that because we are small in those categories compared with some of the larger company so so that that's one of the reasons but I think now the uh, commodity prices are cooling down and I think uh, durable margins has already improved even if you look at uh, Q1 and that will improve going forward right so and the in-house in-house manufacturing share going forward in two three years so right now it's about 60 percent uh, I think it will go to about 75 percent in the next two three years okay Okay, that's very helpful. And so one more question if I can ask. So how much high cost inventory are we holding right now? Like is it worth one month, two month? So like Sudarshan mentioned, uh, you know, if you look at uh, uh, if you look at the uh, if you look at the overall company, our FG inventory is at about uh, our FG inventory is about uh, seventy days or eighty days. Uh, if you look at specifically uh, copper and wire, uh, it is about sixty days including RM and FG. Okay, so uh, just another last question. Can you give the utilization levels for different plants? Uh, so, Darshan, do you have these numbers? Utilization levels? Uh, no, don't have that data handy. We'll come back. Okay, we'll share it thank offline. You, thank you. Sure, sir. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Rakesh Roy from Insect Securities and Finance Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yes. So my, first, yes. uh, my, uh, my question is, sir, is, sir, can you highlight your, your non-South market performance, especially, sir, which region did well in this Q1, sir? 
See, if you look at uh, non-South, Northern and Western markets, uh, you know, had very good summer. Uh, whereas Eastern markets, you know, there was intermittent rains uh, right from May onwards. So both North and the Western markets did well. Right, sir. Uh, sir, any addition to dealer or distributor in non-South market in this Q1, sir? Uh, we would have done it. I mean, we are not carrying any specific numbers with us. But, uh, you know, like we said, our target is to add 3,000 to 4,000 retailers every year. Okay, sir. Uh, some la last question, sir. Any any chance to take uh, another uh, price hike in near future? Or, you know? I think for most categories, it may not be required uh, because the copper, uh, you know, the, all the raw material prices have come down. Uh, maybe there may be some small increase required in some parts of, uh, you know, durable. But largely, I think, uh, you know, it may not be very, very large increases may not be required as what we believe. Right, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for my service. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Hitesh Tonk from ICICI Direct. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, I uh, Hitesh, are you speaking? We can hear you. No, the voice is very feeble. Okay. Something like uh, Am I am I audible? Hello, sir. Ah, uh, please, please try again. I just wanted to know, sir, what is the price hike you have taken for the Q1? Q1? Uh, price hike for Q1. About 2%, 2, 2.5%. 2, 2 for 2.5%. Okay. Sir, one, one more book question. Why is the employee cost is high on a Q1? Sorry, your question is on employee cost. Is it? Employee cost. Why employee cost on a QOQ basis. Is that your question? Yes, sir. Yeah, so there are two factors. There is a variable pay accrual this quarter. Uh, last quarter it was not required. Uh, so that's, it's about a 7 crore difference on account of that. And the other one is increment kick in, in Q1. So that's the difference between the two quarters. Okay. And sir, uh, my last question is, uh, is about uh, uh, kitchen appliances category, uh, largely pertaining to our uh, you know, uh, built-in kitchen category. So what is the kind of distribution are we planning going forward in this category and what is our strategy to take it forward? Are we looking for some kind of market share? I mean, what is the current market share if you can throw some light and in future what kind of market share are you planning to catch in that segment? So VGAD is not uh, present in the entire spectrum of built-in kitchens. We are only doing uh, cooks and hobs. And uh, they're primarily, you know, today a traded, uh, you know, business. Uh, and we are selling only through Amazon and Flipkart, only to online partners. Uh, we are not intending to go to offline as yet. Um, so, yeah, and that's, uh, so, so that, that's as far as the built-in part is concerned. It's very small today. It's not a very large uh, business. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. That's all for my case. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashil Gandhi from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Mr. Bang, please go ahead with the question. Since uh, the line of Mr. Bang is disconnected, we'll go for the next question. And that is from the line of Mr. Prashil Gandhi from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. So, just a question for my end. So, what is the channel inventory at your channel partner? What does, is it high, low? Uh, Ram, you want to take this? Channel. Uh, ch channel inventory is uh, more or less uh, normal. Yeah, channel inventory is normal. So uh, nothing abnormal at this stage. I think uh, wire might be a bit uh, lower 
because uh, you know with uh, the expectation of price reduction you know the you know uh, the you know uh, the later part of uh, the quarter uh, you know the sales were uh, lower so i think uh, wire will be lower but otherwise i think uh, by and large i think uh, inventory should be normal yeah yeah and you highlighted that uh, there was some demand slow down in june so could you throw a bit color on that do you think it is some transitory kind of a slow down or there is uh, it's, uh, it's related to weather so i think you know so what we observed is you know categories uh, which are uh, weather dependent right i think uh, they had a bit of slow down uh, primarily uh, stabilizer uh, inverter battery to some degree and uh, fan right and uh, maybe pump so a bit of slowness was there in these categories uh, but uh, it is not uh, across all all categories it's in this 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 categories right? and uh, mainly you know the slowness uh, was uh, you know in uh, non south uh. and last question from my end so do you engage in any kind of hedging for your raw materials no no okay. we had forex not materials okay okay thank you that's very helpful and all the best thank you before we take the next question a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question next question is from the line of bavin bitlani from sbi mutual funds please go ahead sir about uh, indigenizing uh, tpw fans so if you could just give us uh, an update where are we what's the kind of investment and the uh, the capacity that we are looking to create in that sub segment and and what's the kind of share that tpw has in the overall fans uh, segment for us uh sorry the first part of the question was not audible uh, can you repeat the question sure uh, in the previous call you had mentioned about uh, indigenization of tpw uh, manufacturing which is currently being imported yeah so yeah got it ram you want to take this yeah so uh, tpw would be you know roughly about 25 to 30% 30% of our uh, business you can take 30% of our business would be tpw and uh, main challenge that uh, we had with the tpw was you know it was imported uh, so you know duty and you know freight uh, were major challenges and that was affecting our uh, competitiveness and that's also reflecting in you know uh, the significant drop that you see in our uh, consumer durable uh, business right so uh, with that context i think you know uh, and also to you know ensure supply security you know we've uh, decided to invest in uh, setting up a, a tpw facility yeah so i think uh, you know as far as the facility is concerned you know uh, you know we would be investing probably some 30 35 odd crores in uh, plant and machinery for uh, tpw manufacturing yeah and obviously we will start uh, small uh, with a few uh, skus and then you know progressively expand to address the category need so what is what are the timelines that we are looking at and when will the facility be ready should be under 12 months i suppose Okay, so till such time, margins for the fan segment will continue to be subdued. So yeah, it uh, for TBW fans, it you know it will uh, it will be better uh, than before. So we have uh, so we are having two uh, approaches. One is setting up our own factory, but uh, even before that, the, we had invested in our own molds and dyes, uh, and the India made uh, you know TBW fans are already started to come into the market. So so some part of the issues will get solved there, but I think. Uh, our range will be a challenge the entire range will probably we can do only you know indigenous only a bunch of our factory comes in so today we are only probably going to make the uh, you know uh, most voluminous and most popular you know skus uh, so uh, in india uh, through a vendor in hyderabad sure uh, the second question also is is on the fan so we after uh, the new manufacturing we kind of entered the decorative segment to Uh, if you could just give us uh, uh, the timelines and the way forward, how are we looking to move up on the premium and the super premium uh, sex sub segment of that, and uh, that also will require significant investment in brand building. So, wh- how if you could just uh, highlight the way forward 
on moving up the value chain on the fans uh, uh, segment, the ceiling fan segment. Ram, you want to take this? Yeah. So I think uh, you know the you know the the investment that we have made uh, in the plant uh, is uh, primarily you know focused towards. Uh, uh, premium and super premium categories. In fact, uh, I think um, uh, you know, uh, 85, 90 percent of the output uh, is uh, targeted towards that, and you know, 10 percent of the capacity is uh, targeted towards uh, uh, mid-end uh, fans. So uh, I think you know, and uh, we 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 hope to you know get to about 85, 90 percent uh, capacity utilization, you know, during the season. Uh, uh, or probably even uh, close to full utilization uh, for, from coming season. So, so I think that the journey is uh, progressing uh, well for us. Yeah. Uh, mainly, we will be focusing with the manufacturing only on uh, you know the decorative segment, which focus on premium and uh, super premium fans. Right. Um, we'll continue to source um, you know entry level fans uh, you know uh, from the market or the. What I would say as a popular segment, uh, you know, uh, you know, from the vendor ecosystem, and uh, that strategy will continue. Sure. Uh, just this last question from my side. In in the current quarter, uh, uh, we, we, I mean, it seems like there is a margin impact in in the electronic segment also. So, is uh, is that uh, due to the inverter segment or stabilizers, and how do you see uh, margin stabilization going forward? Sorry, uh, how are you saying that? No, no. Yeah, there is. See, the uh, the mix of stabilizers sold in this quarter is very different from last quarter. Okay. 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 And even the proportion of stabilizers and inverters to the total is also different. So, there is a significant mix impact. Okay. Uh, so, so the margin decline that we're seeing is a function of mix impact and not decline in the individual category margins. Is, is that the correct interpretation? Yeah. No, I think there is some impact. Uh, so, Sudarshan, there is some impact on uh, the inverter battery business, uh, you know, uh, in Q1. That is true. But there is also a larger impact of the mix uh, in terms of the product mix and the category mix. Okay, fine. So, uh, would the sustainable margin come back to that 17 odd percent that we have seen historically, or uh, is this the new normal? No, I think 17% is probably, uh, you know, uh, what happened in Q1 and FI20. That was probably uh, in a uh, year where we had extraordinarily high sales, you know, because summer was very good. So I think maybe 15 to 16% may be the correct electronic margin. Sure, sure. Thank you so much for taking my question. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Yash Kimka from SSB Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Are we audible? Yeah. Yes. So I just had one question that how are you looking forward towards the demand scenario of electronic segment? And a corollary question to this, that your copper price is reducing. How will the margins of electronic segment in particular will be impacted in forthcoming quarters? Can you throw some light on it? Uh, Mithun, can I take this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, see, uh, just to tell you, we are uh, setting up uh, two manufacturing facilities, uh, one for battery and uh, one for inverter and stabilizer. So I think, uh, you know, uh, both these uh, should uh, help to improve our competitiveness and uh, and, uh, you know, obviously we'll have a positive, uh, you know, margin impact, uh, you know, because uh, the investment is hypothesized on uh, getting a payback for the investment. So I think, you know, that uh, obviously, you know, and obviously, you know, as far as, uh, you know, inverter and battery are concerned, uh, making this investment uh, will help to improve our competitiveness. It will also help to improve our flexibility and therefore uh, should help us uh, to, uh, you know, uh, grow the business better uh, because we will be able to be more responsive, uh, you know, uh, in the season uh, to market needs. And uh, we, we will have, um, you know, uh, more flexibility to address uh, the market demand through a mix of uh, own and the sourced uh, uh, product uh, portfolio. Yeah? So I think uh, th 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 there will be favorable consequence uh, because of our manufacturing investment on the overall health of the electrical and electronic business. Yeah. 
Uh, there is uh, some amount of margin stress uh, which is seen in uh, QOQ, uh, but uh, that is also because uh, I think you know some of the you know impact of uh, input cost increase, right? You know, has been uh, later in some categories, like in the case of uh, batteries. You know, the red impact has come later. You know, whereas in some other uh, categories, the come out impact has come much earlier in the year. So I think a bit of that is uh, you know seen, uh, but I think you know like in other categories, I think you know progressively as we go forward. The um, uh, you know the as commodity is correct, uh, you know uh, I think you know they should also get corrected. Yeah. Okay. There may be some you know marginal drop in uh, you know like uh, stabilizer or inverter, but that is consistent with the increase in you know input cost that has happened, and uh, that should uh, roll back you know as uh, the input cost uh, roll back over time. Yeah. Oh, that helps. And so another question that. How are you seeing demand in cables and switch gears in Q2? Like, is it being strong? Uh, I think you know, as far as switches and switch gears, I think um, you know, as I think Mithun had said earlier, in general, the I think uh, uh, as far as the demand uh, from uh, the construction segment is concerned, uh, you know, it has been stable, and uh, therefore, you know, we expect to see continued demand. Having said that, our uh, you know incumbent uh, market size and market position is uh, fairly small. So as far as we are concerned, uh, we believe we should be able to you know post uh, decent growth uh, consistent with how we have been growing in the last two three years. Okay, thank you. Well, that helps a lot. Thank you. The next call is. Is from the line of Nikhil Kale from Axis Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking the question. Uh, just going back to the electronics margin. Uh, now you talked about the new facilities that you're looking up, uh, looking to put up uh, for inverter and batteries, and that that could kind of improve your competitiveness. Just wanted to understand, uh, would it be fair to assume that uh, given that you will kind of see margin benefits? And if that is the case, uh, uh, would the strategy be to retain the margins or uh, pass it on to consumers and try to gain uh, incremental market share? So, if you look at the inverter and battery business today, Vigar is not very competitive in terms of pricing. So, some of that uh, margins will be uh, passed on and some of it will be retained. So, but you will still see some margin improvement is what we expect. Okay. So... Okay, but then um, would you then still stick with like the 15 to 16 percent kind of a range for this segment uh, over the medium term? You're talking about electronics? Yeah. Yes, electronics anyway, I think, uh, you know, uh, we should expect a 16 percent margin. But uh, that is in the, yeah, we should we should go back to the 16 percent margin in my view. That That is possible. Today, I think we got, uh, you know, products are not very cost competitive, especially in the battery segment where we are also seeing the production. Okay, great. And then just secondly, uh, as we kind of uh, move towards more uh, in-house manufacturing, uh, again from a company perspective or a company level, uh, how are you looking at the uh, kind of margin improvement? Is there any target that you're looking at in terms of uh, uh, incrementally you want to take your uh, margins to a particular level over the next three to five years? Uh, any any uh, color on that front? So I think as we have always mentioned that, uh, you know, we will, uh, you know, look at, uh, you know, improvement from there on. And I think that is possible, uh, you know, with these initiatives. Uh, but uh, these initiatives will take uh, two or three years to gain fruit because in the first uh, one year and one and a half years, maybe, you know, there will be excess, uh, you know, there will be a lot of uh, inefficiencies in the manufacturing process, which will then be streamlined going forward. So. Yes, we have seen that happening and whenever we set up a plant, uh, it is with a clear, you know, IRR and it is with a clear return, uh, you know, that we do that uh, with a clear margin improvement program for the category. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, we have reached the end of question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Deepak Agarwal for closing comments. Uh, thank you, management, for giving a valuable time for this call and, 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 and allowing us to host this call. And thanks, everyone, for joining this call. Management, any closing remark that you want to make? Uh, nothing, Deepak. Uh, thank you so much for hosting this call. And thank you, thanks to Philip Capital. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, thank you so much and thanks very much for joining this call. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Philip Capital India, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Please subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss another update. Please like, share and comment.